Hey everybody, it's me again. All right, I'm gonna try something different uh, than my usual technique. Generally, I put the silicone in the mix cup, the pouring cup. Um, but I've heard of several people just putting that, putting the silicone in the color and letting it sit, not even stirring it. So let's give that a whirl. One, three drops. And that is the worst thing that could possibly happen, which is silicone that just dripped on the canvas. No bueno. All right, so just to make sure that, that is not gonna reject anything. Just put a little bit of alcohol and water just to break that up. All right, that should be fine. I always lay down a base coat because when the silicone hits the canvas, you wind up with those pits. I do not like those one bit. Um, I will give my mixing cup a little shot of the blaster silicone, mix it well. It has a lot of other ingredients in there. Spray away from the canvas. Give it a little wipe. And let's get this party started. One of the things I love about this particular art form is you can use the same colors, the same technique 20 times in a row and get 20 different results. It's really interesting when you use primary colors, how many different combinations of colors you'll wind up with. Uh, something else to take note of when doing a base coat for your painting, the base coat that you use uh, will definitely have a definitely have an effect on the, your colors. If I were to use black under this, it would dull the colors. So I like to use white. It makes the colors pop. And if it doesn't go well, I had a painting that I tried to fix and I just couldn't make it do anything that satisfied me. And I took all the paint and just scraped it in the middle to pour it off and it started selling beautifully. So I just stretched it back out and uh, and it wound up looking fantastic. Uh, let me grab that painting for you, I'll show you. There it is. So this was all metallics and uh, with a white base coat. There was no white in the pour, it was just in the base coat. And when I scraped it, it started selling and I just tilted it. And I would definitely say that this is the rescue of the year. Okay, so let's lay down a little bit of a base coat here. This gets your paint sliding around nicely. A dry canvas will, uh, I feel, doesn't give the best results. Um, the paint that's on the bottom wants to stick to the canvas, while the paint that's on the top rolls over 
top of the paint that is sticking to the canvas. And I feel like that can cause mud. You don't have to go crazy with making it perfect. I'm going to be doing full coverage. I'm not doing a, uh, a negative space pour. But that is also another good reason to think about using your base coat and what color base coat you would want to use just in case you dump that cup and all of your best stuff is hanging out on the edges and you want to preserve like even if it's just an edge you can make it a negative space painting Trusty slider. Oop. That is a full cup. And slide that one there. Okay. Letting the paint settle a bit in the cup. This is okay. This is not tragic. It will be getting covered up, but look how beautiful that is. The cells just popping up. Who knows, I may wind up liking this technique better. And generally when I, uh, I, I used to put the silicone in the cup and stir it, but I would be, I was doing bigger cups because I was doing multiple pours or uh, bigger canvases, and then I was just winding up with very tiny cells because I had to keep mixing the paint. So I decided to be very precise about it since it takes three ounces to cover a 10 by 10, doing exactly three ounces. That is some nice cell action. I'm not gonna lie. Wow. I may be abandoning my old technique if this uh, proves to be consistent. And for the first time in any of my pours, all of the cool stuff is happening in the middle. <laughs> all the cool stuff usually happens on the end for me. So the longer you let this sit, the more cells pop up, and then you stretch those cells, that's when you get the big cells. Let's uh, pop any of those bubbles in our base coat. I would love to try resin, um, but we have two cats in this house and I'm forever plucking cat hairs out of my paintings and I know I would be very sad <laughs> if I spent all that money on resin and had a uh, 
feline artifact. Okay. The stretching. It is best to go slowly so that you don't break those cells. I don't know if you can see the, oh, I don't want to put my hand over the painting, but there are cells on my hand. <laughs> I don't know if you can see those cells on my hand. Wish I could just press that onto a piece of paper. Um, I like to go corner to opposing corner. Okay, now moving the mass of paint. You see the majority of the paint is moving back to the center. And now, we'll go this way. I feel like doing it this way is the best way to keep the shape of your cells. Don't know how I'm going to edit that out. Try to move that mass back into the center. Well, I think I may be uh, <laughs> changing my technique yet again. I really like the way this turned out. Yeah, no complaints about that. Let me wash my hands and I'll take you in for a close-up. I'm very happy with this piece. That is some serious cell action. All right, that's it. Gina DeLuca signing out. Please like, subscribe. I will be uploading more videos frequently. Have a great day. Go make some art.